Hey guys, how's it going? Um, first of all, I didn't really do much to kind of project the room a little better. Um, just because I, I couldn't wait any longer. Talking about Ford versus Ferrari. Um, right off the bat, I had heard a lot of great things about this movie. And I can say all of them are true. From the start, it's just... A very compelling movie so let's get through some factual information first and then we'll jump into my thoughts it's directed by james mangold and it's a sport action film from 2019 stars christian bale as ken miles matt damon as carol shelby john bernthal the punisher as lee iacocca tracy letts as henry ford the second i'm gonna butcher this so i apologize to the actress Carrie Torino, Tur uh, I'm not even bother. Uh, her last name is Balf, B-A-L-F-E, uh, as Molly Miles. Josh Lucas as Leo Beebe, this is legit last name. Noah Jupe as Peter Miles. Remo Giron as Enzo Ferrari. Ray McKinnon as Phil Remington and J.J. Field as Roy Lunn. I couldn't find any real information that confirms or denies who the actor who plays the titular Ferrari driver. Um, it's not Enzo Ferrari. He's like 90 in the movie, so he's definitely not driving. Off of a budget of $97.6 million, it made $225.5 million at the box office. has a 92% on Rotten Tomatoes. A well-earned 92%. Uh, this is probably my favorite movie of 2019. So, sorry Joker fans, sorry Endgame fans, sorry Rise of Skywalker fans, the few of, you, few of us that there are. If you're not big in the sport movies, I like myself. Um, I, I can guarantee you, out of every movie that I own over there, this is the only sport film I have. But... It has kind of a topic I enjoy, which is cars. I probably should have put this up as a prop, but I just realized it was on my desk right at this moment, so it worked out perfectly. Uh, this is a, I want to say a 68 Challenger. Very cool. Not in the movie. I do have a Mustang, but it's not put together. Um, and it's based off the movie Bullet, so... I don't know, maybe I should put it together and review Bullet? but I don't own bullets, so who knows. Um, between action, drama, and comedy, this film blends all three of those elements while also being historically accurate to the situ situation it's depicting. It's depicting the first ever GT Shelby being built, and it's built by Carol Shelby's company. Uh, I want to say it was Shelby American Motors was the name of the company in the film wonder if it says it on the back no it just says ford motor company um while it's really being tested and built by ken miles and i'll get to that all in a minute um but the the cat the acting in the movie keeps you so focused in on it and you forget the fact that jason Bourne and batman are our two leads and christian bale and matt damon they have like this amazing chemistry together that i really hope is real in real life um i'm not too sure i know matt damon and ben affleck are more buddy buddy um but i don't know about matt damon and christian bale um yeah but their chemistry is so wonderful together that in inside of this little movie universe here you feel that those two are definitely old friends. And again, I really hope that's true for Christian Bale and Matt Damon because they are wonderful in this. They, throughout the movie, though, there's a lot of deception going on between the characters. Uh, at one point... At one point, the Ford Motor Company, when they finally... They build the first GT Shelby and they're going to go test it in France. Uh, Ford Motor Company says, no, Ken is not our driver. Matt Damon's character, Carol Shelby, says, he's my friend. He knows this car. 
no, he's not our driver. You have to tell him. So he has to say, look, you, we're not taking you to France. You're not driving. And Christian Bale's character throughout has a lot of anger issues. But what I like is he doesn't ever get angry at Matt Damon's character. Even when they get an actual fight, they're just screwing around. They're just two buds having fun. And they're beating the hell out of each other with bread and cans and all sorts of stuff. Nope. Now, yes, in the beginning, he does whip a wrench at him. But other than that, I mean, that's literally one moment that he ever shows any anger towards Carol Shelby. Towards the end of the movie, the Ferrari driver, uh, again, I can't think of his name, tampers with the door to the GT. And they, he's, Miles is going through his first lap and slamming the door shut and he finally gets it and then it flies open and keeps pulling it shut. And he's really losing time and losing speed because he's, you know, trying to focus on the road, but the door keeps flying open. So it adds a lot of action into that, but fuck that, dude. Don't, don't mess with a guy's car, uh, honestly. And I'm not that big of a car guy, um, but I do... I do enjoy watching uh, S Monkey Garage when their show is on. Um, I didn't have a car shirt, so I was like, but I have a Gas Monkey Garage shirt. Let's throw that on. Um, but yeah, he, he he screws with the door. So when he pulls, when Miles throws in himself into the pit, they're trying to get the door to shut. He's getting pissed and pissed. And I want to say it was... Phil Reming, uh, yeah, Phil Remington, played by Ray McKinnon, walks up with a with a mount, beats on the door till it shuts, and says, "Go!" And off they go. Um, yeah, but it really, really screws up Miles' first laugh, lap. Instinctively, though, Carol Shelby is a hysterical character. He supports Miles and even locks. The new and uh, Lax Leo, his boss, in the office so he can take Henry Ford out in the new and improved Shelby to convince Ford that Miles should drive since Ken built the car. He knows the car through and through. So if you know your car, you're going to be the one driving it. But no, they don't want it to happen. Um, <laughs> he also gives a bunch of these, like, hysterical, like, side glances you know kind of like when you're looking over like can you believe this guy can you believe this guy he does a lot of those um and they're not meant to be funny but we the audience think they are especially me i was laughing um my girlfriend was on facetime with me while i was watching this and she's like what are you watching and i'm like ford versus ferrari she's like but i didn't think that was supposed to be a funny movie it's not but it is um Ken Miles is probably the best character in this movie, though. And yes, he's another one that's really funny, but he's grounded at the same time. Um, like I said, he's got anger issues. You know, there's a there's a moment uh, with some, I don't remember, some big shot. I don't remember if it was for Ford or some other company. I think it was for another company. And uh, Miles just goes... Uh, He's arguing with this guy. Carol Shelby stops, steps in the way, you know, pushes him apart, kind of the mediator of the group. And he's like, hey, what's going on here? And Ken's like, this guy's being an asshole. And he's just like, he didn't mean that. Oh, yes, he did. No, he, he didn't mean that. Yes, he did. He's standing behind him going, I fucking meant it. This guy's being an asshole. I literally lost my shit during that scene. I was cracking up so much. And he has probably the most emotional ending. Um, so spoiler alert, if you don't want me to ruin anything. Um, you know, not a lot of people really knew this movie existed. And I'm going to, I highly recommend this movie above anything else I'll ever review, including the entire MCU, all of the Star Wars movies. This is the one I will recommend to you the most. I'm insanely crazy about this movie. Um, I don't know why. Other than, like, all the character moments, the action, the racing, all of it. It's like my mind was on live wire watching this movie. I was so impressed with it. Um, 
But anyway, back to what I was talking about. So yes, this is a spoiler alert. Um, Ken r wins the race. Uh, he beats Ferrari. As he's pulling up, he slows down and waits for the other two Ford drivers. And they all go in together. He loses on a technicality. Uh, one of the other drivers got, like, started before him or some bullshit. He, he, he loses on a technicality. And Carol is upset. And he's just like, you know what? You promised me a race. Not a win. Um... And they go back to the States and they start working on the car again to make it faster. And during one of his test runs, he crashes the car and dies. Honestly, probably one of the emotion, most emotional movies I've ever felt. Um, that moment, I knew it was coming. I really did. I saw it coming. I was like, he's going to die before the end of this. I did not want it to happen, but even though it happened, I don't hate this movie. I actually like it more, because you think it's going to happen during the big race. No. It happens at the end. Even though he lost, he's trying to fix what he lost. He's trying to make the car better. That's what he cares about. He doesn't care about winning. He cares about making the car better. And he dies doing so. Um, I really can't find anything I don't like about this movie, so I'm going to give it a 10 out of 10. And for a channel first, this will be the first movie that wins my titular Silver Shamrock. Again, it's a reference to Halloween 3. We will get there. Um, It's really awarded to movies that I find perfect. This is perfect. Hollywood in 40 years don't ever remake this. I really recommend it, though, even if you're not a huge car buff. Um, like myself, I couldn't tell you how to fix my car. My brothers could, my dad could, my grandfather, any of my uncles, they could all tell you. I don't know. This is my shit right here. Comic books, uh, movies, that's my, that's my shit. Don't ask me how to fix cars unless they're little Lego things. That's how I'll fix it. Um, tonight on Instagram and tomorrow on YouTube... We're going to start Disney Week with Tangled. Um, I've never seen Tangled. I am not the target demographic for it. So please don't judge me in the comments section if you think it's like the greatest Disney movie ever. I am probably not going to think that. Especially with the bunch of the bangers I've got lined up for this week. Uh, like Aladdin, The Lion King. Um, I tell you the whole week right now. Uh, like I said, tonight on... So we'll just go through the Instagram schedule. Tonight is Tangled. Tomorrow is The Little Mermaid. Tuesday is The Lion King. Wednesday is Beauty and the Beast. Thursday is Aladdin. Friday is Hunchback of Notre Dame. And Saturday is freaking Mulan. And we are not leaving the Disney Renaissance except for one time, and that's tonight. Um, so yeah, bangers only in this group. If you have a Disney movie that's your favorite that I didn't just mention... Let me know, and I'll check it out. I'm look, I'm hoping to do both Wreck-It Ralphs, too, while I'm in doing this whole Disney week. But at the same time, I'm probably... I mean, there's hundreds of other Disney movies that I'm going to do at another point. I'll do another Disney week, probably. Um, but these are the ones I really wanted to get out of the way, because I absolutely love all of these. Don't be surprised if you see a whole bunch of 10 out of 10s this week. Um, no, I don't just give it away. If I think the movie's bad, I think it's terrible. Um, but yeah, don't be surprised if you see a whole bunch of stuff. Another thing is, yes, tomorrow is May the 4th. And I am not ready for it. Um, I've been holding off on watching The Clone Wars Season 7 since it started. I watched the first episode and I was like, you know what? I'd rather just binge the whole series. Well, that proved to be a mistake because I was on the internet and saw spoilers that we are, as most of you know, just going to go right through this episode three scenes. You know, here's what happens in the movie, but this is what's happening in the Clone Wars side of it. Um, so I was like, well, shit, I want to be able to watch episode 12, I think it's 12, episode 12, when it comes out like I did for The Mandalorian. Um, 
So I had to watch all of it. I binged it within last night and today. Um, I gotta say, I'm pretty, I'm still pretty shook up from what's going on. A lot of things were confusing to me. Um, and I'll get more into that, but I do want to talk about this real quick. I thought in Rebels, Rex said he removed his inhibitor chip. Um, I'd have to rewatch Rebels though now because I, I, I can't remember. I swear though, he said he removed his inhibitor chip prior to Order 66. But now it's not true. I don't know. Like I said, we'll get more into that. I will definitely go through and review the season itself um, and just kind of skip over the rest of it. I like the Clone Wars. Um, let me be honest, I liked Rebels more than the Clone Wars until today. I think Season 7 really showed off what the Clone Wars is all about. But again, I'm going to do a whole review on that, probably exclusively just for YouTube. He's a pain in the butt, I promise you. Um, even though he looks adorable. But anyway, so I will do a whole review of the Clone Wars exclusively for YouTube just because I prefer this where I can kind of get my thoughts out in the air versus reading what's on a screen and typing it up. I'll still have something to go by on my laptop over here, kind of like I do for all of these, and usually I just kind of read what's on it. Um, but for movies that I think are really great, like like this one, I'm going to go off on tangents a bit, um, as you can see. So I'll do that with the Clone Wars. It'll exclusively be for YouTube. Maybe I'll get more... Uh, more viewers that way. A lot of people are probably gonna be like, well, well no, I wanna see what everyone thinks about the Clone Wars in there and see my video and be like, hey, how's it going? So until all of that, that's like a huge plan for this week, I guess. Um, and also any Disney movies you recommend me to watch, they don't wanna see you. He's cute, but you don't wanna see his butt. Um, any Disney movies you guys recommend me to watch throughout the week, I will probably just do exclusively, oh my god, on YouTube. So until then, I am Luke and I will see you guys later.